What's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. We finally got some new information on the upcoming Aya Neo Air and the Aya Neo Plus. We've got pricing, we've got specs, and they also announced a couple other really awesome things at their recent press conference that I kind of wanted to go over. If you're not familiar with the Aya Neo Air, we've been kind of following the progress for a little while now on the channel, and uh, overall, it does look like a really nice little handheld. And initially, we didn't know exactly what CPU they were going to be using here, but a lot of information has come out in their latest press conference, along with some other products that we'll get to by the end. But all in all, there's going to be two different CPU options when it comes to the Aya Neo Air. They've got the Aya Neo Air and the Aya Neo Air Pro. But across the whole console line, there's really five different SKUs, and it definitely can get confusing. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. So like I mentioned, you're going to have the option between two different APUs. We've got the 5560U and the 5825U. The 5560U has six cores, 12 threads. The CPU is based on Zen 2, and we've got Vega graphics. When it comes to the 5825U, this is the same APU we're seeing in the Aya Neo Next Pro. We've got eight cores, 16 threads, Vega 8 graphics, and this is based on Zen 3. Really great CPU performance. And when it comes down to it on a lower resolution screen, it'll actually game pretty well. Alright, so try to stay with me here, but right now we're talking about the Ryzen 5 5560U powered units. There's a few of them, as you can see. 6 cores, 12 threads, we've got a base clock of 2.3 and a boost up to 4. Radeon 7 graphics, and all of these units will be using a 5.5 inch 1080p OLED display. Lowest end model here, 549 retail, 499 early bird. You get a 28 watt hour battery, 128 gigabytes of storage. 8 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz and a TDP of 5 to 12 watts with no fingerprint reader. Moving over to the mid tier, retail on this 629, we still got that 28 watt hour battery, but we get a 256 gigabyte SSD and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 4266 megahertz. You can see that on this model, they actually allow you to take that TDP up a little higher, 5 to 15 as opposed to 5 to 12 with the lower end model, and this one does have a fingerprint reader. And finally, for the 5560U variants, they're considering this the Pro model with the 5560. We get a 38 watt hour battery, 512 to 1 terabyte SSD, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 4266 megahertz. When it comes to the TDP on this one, 5 to 18, and this one also includes a fingerprint reader. So as you can see, it does get a bit confusing. You know, the lowest end model is 549, but we only get 8 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, which is going to make a big difference with these built-in Radeon graphics. So that was it for the Ryzen 5 5560U version, but we've got the Ryzen 7 5825U version. 8 cores, 16 threads, this is based on Zen 3. Base clock of 2 GHz, boost up to 4.5, Radeon Vega 8 graphics, and it'll still be using that 5.5 inch 1080p OLED display. These prices range from $899 up to $1400. You get a 38 watt hour battery. You can choose between a 512, 1 terabyte, or 2 terabyte SSD. They've also upped the RAM on this for the higher end versions. You can choose between 16 and 32 gigabytes of LPDDR4X running at 4266 megahertz. TDP can be set from 5 to 18 watts, and this one does have a fingerprint reader. This will definitely be the most powerful version of the Aya Neo Air, but it's also going to be the most expensive, from $899, and these are the retail, not early bird prices, up to $1,400. In the recent conference, they also released some gameplay footage using the 5825U version. Now, this is an APU that, in my opinion, does require a lot more wattage to get the best performance out of it. And right now, they're running it at 15. Here's Forza Horizon 5. They also showed off a little bit of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Here's Genshin Impact, and they did test out a few more. I'm not going to show them all off, but we've got one more here. So this is all at 15 watts on that 5825U. I've extensively tested the 5800U, and at higher wattage, we can get much better performance. But in a handheld form factor like this, it's going to be hard to take that TDP up much higher than this. And each one of these games is running at 720p, low settings.
So along with the specs and price announcement of the IONEO Air, they also announced IONEO OS. So they have a full UI demonstration over on their YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description. This is based on Linux, and personally, I can't wait to get my hands on it. It will have per game settings, kind of like the Steam Deck. We can adjust the TDP. It's also got a retro game section, basically a little emulation front end built in. And I can't wait to get my hands on it. I'm going to install it on the IONEO next and see how it performs. I'll do a full video as long as uh, you know I can get my hands on a copy a little early. But yeah, this looks pretty cool, and a lot of people definitely want to swap over to Linux on their handhelds after seeing how well the Steam Deck does. But first and foremost, these are still going to be Windows devices. You can swap back and forth between these operating systems. You can dual boot, you can triple boot with it. But I gotta say, for me at least, the most exciting thing they announced here was the upcoming IONEO Air Plus. This is going to be the world's first handheld powered by AMD's Mendocino platform. And if you're not familiar with that, we've got Zen 2 cores with RDNA 2 graphics. These are coming out at the end of the year for cheaper mainstream laptops. We've got four cores, eight threads, but the iGPU is based on RDNA 2. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, we don't know how many CUs we're going to have on that iGPU, but it does look promising. And with this here, it'll have a six inch display. You can replace the SSD with a 2280 SSD, so you'll be able to upgrade this very easily. And if I convert this over to USD, around $289. We've yet to see anything from this APU yet, but as soon as I can get my hands on a laptop powered by Mendocino, I'll be doing a ton of testing. I got a feeling it's going to be a nice little APU, even though, you know, the cores are still based on Zen 2, but that iGPU is RDNA 2. And the last thing here from their conference, they did announce a few different collaborations, one being 8-Bit-O. So they've got their new controller coming out, which looks great. We're also going to be releasing a couple limited edition IONEO Airs, the first one being from B-Duck. And the second one, I don't want to butcher the name, so I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but I do think it looks really, really good. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'm really excited about the Mendocino handheld and IONEO OS. I'll definitely have a video coming up on the channel, so keep an eye out. But let me know what you think about these announcements in the comments below. Are you going to skip it? Are you going to pick one up? Are you just going to wait till Ryzen 6000 or maybe even wait that out till Ryzen 8000 mobile chips come out or whatever they call them at the time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to check out the full conference, link for that is in the description. I'm also going to leave a couple links to their Twitter. But that's it for this one, and thanks for watching.